Hello, parents, builders, and collectors. On this episode of the Creation Evaluation Station, we're going to have our very first Model Monday. Um, it's going to be, we are going to be evaluating this, and um, it's the Gundam RX-78-2. It is an entry grade level, which I'll talk about more in a moment. And uh, yeah, we aren't always going to be doing Gundams, but we'll probably be doing a lot of them. This is the most amount of model kits that I have. Um, there will be other models in other companies as well, though. Uh, but for those not familiar with my channel, I do in-depth reviews of models and construction kits, both new and old, mostly Lego, but other products as well, as in this case. And I also do um, reviews and discussions of other creative works, such as movies, video games, and animation. Because they're in-depth reviews, they can be on the long side. So make sure you're checking out the timestamps down here on the little red bar or down in the description to jump ahead to the parts you'd be most interested in or to use as bookmarks to come back with at a later date when you have more time. So now, this is my very first Gundam review, so go easy on me. Um, I'm still working out the kinks how I want to set this up. But this is not going to be just a review. We are also going to be comparing it with a action figure of the same Gundam. I thought that would be neat. And uh, since I found this on clearance, because to be honest, I, I mean, I love Gundams and I love robots and stuff like that. But I'd rather have a model kit than an action figure. Um, although I don't mind these action figures are, well, they're what? I think between $15 and $20 for these, give or take. I paid a lot less for that. Um, but for larger, like, there's there's some really large action figures. And they're really expensive. I'd rather have them as a model and assemble them. Because that gives more value to that. But, yeah, we're going to compare it and see how it looks. And basically detail. I don't quite think they're quite the same scale, so uh, that's going to be odd. But in regards to the entry grade here, um, I'm not sure how in-depth we are. I'm We're going to do... I did already put this together and um, opened up the box and everything else on a live stream, which I might clip in here. We'll see. So you can still see that, but... Uh, yeah, these are entry grades. This is, uh, the thing about entry grades, they require no glue, no painting, and, um, what was the other thing? No glue, no painting. It doesn't have any stickers. Although I'm not sure if that's true of all entry grades, but it is of this model. Um, but yeah, and they're really easy to put together, but don't be fooled. They look really nice, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, and and they're cheap. They're also very cheap, uh, around ten dollars, I would say, if not less. Um, but yeah, so let's go check it out and check out this other guy as well. Here we have the Gundam RX seventy eight dash two all put together, looking pretty good. Um, must say, for an entry grade, something that's supposed to be simple, it looks really great. Um, could it use paint? Yes. It could definitely use some paneling lining. And if you wanted to do some uh, weathering, that would look really good, too. Um, first, I just want to cover his joints. He's got a double neck joint, so he's got plenty of motion in his uh, neck here. The arm also kind of has a double joint too, has typical rotation here, although it's kind of stiff, but that's okay. This is a model, not an action figure. And on top of that, it could also, this is really neat because it can lift its arm up all the way there. So its shoulder can basically touch its ear, which lets it raise itself way to the sky. Of course, you don't need to always do that, but it definitely gives 
a lot more range of motion and it's got a little uh, bicep twist here the elbow bends really good we should take the gun out just so we can let's not get in the way because gun will get in the way of certain pose ability but there you go that's uh got more than 90 degrees there which i think is enough and it's got some there's a ball joint in the wrist it's a bit stiff um, but you can rotate it and move it around as necessary and we'll put the gun back in here which just slides down there like that um, next we have actually let's move his arm up out of the way so you can see this he's actually got a joint in his chest so he can do an ab crunch like that Normally he'd be like that. He can go back a little bit further, but he can. He's got an ab crunch. That I think that's neat. Um, don't crunch it too hard like that, or you'll pop it out. <laughs> uh, but he does have a joint in there. And the other arm works about the same. And now down to the legs, we have a really great knee joint. Let's turn that around see here it's got uh, two double joints and it can go way beyond 90 degrees it's almost 180 um, so that's nice um, the hips are pretty decent the, the little um, the flaps here get in the way the panels here this one is on a small joint so it can move out a little bit which is why you only really get that much movement out of it so <laughs> for a split that's about it for a split um, if you remove these panels he's actually I think got a little bit more movement in there but I don't think that's quite so necessary and then this panel comes out to here so you can lift the legs forward like that and get almost to 90 degrees there um, plenty of space there then we have ankle it's got some spit room there. It can go forward quite a bit as well. Forward like that. It's got side to side movement a little bit. But you don't need too much for the ankles. Just enough to have the hips splayed. Now this this joint here is really kind of tight, but uh, there's a lot of tight joints on here, which is just good. You don't want it flopping around like a. Now the the uh, shield here is actually you can just simply pop it into a hole that's there, but he also has a handle here, and if you have both connected, it's nice and sturdy. But if you want to move the shield around and have it at different angles. You want to actually pull it out of the hand and you can just rotate it around on that one uh, pin there. And also, that one peg hole is there's space on his back so you can peg the shield in there as well. These uh, white things here are actually lightsaber hilts. Not lightsaber, beam saber hilts, excuse me. Um, beam swords. And uh, there are no special effects for them, so... I mean, you could put them in his hand, but uh, you're not going to get much fun out of that. <laughs> um, I think you can use those as regular beam, beam uh, handles by uh, getting some extra beam from other sets. Uh, let's put him in a pose here. Garden with the shield. Put him off to the side, shooting. Running and shooting. Let's see if we can do that. Not quite like that. Oh. 
problem is I got it on that rotating thing, but so getting his legs to balance while it's moving is a little bit hard. But he's do he does have plenty of uh, movement in his legs. So. So you can do something like that. Let's just look closely, more closely at the action figure guy here. First, his box. This is his box. And this is GU01. So this is the very first uh, one in the uh, GU, which is Gundam Universe line. There are uh, quite a few of them out now, but this is the first one, which makes sense since it's the Granddaddy Gundam. And here is, yeah, let's look that up. You see it. The uh, symbol for that Gundam universe. Um, universe is the action figure line. So if you're looking for these and you're looking online, um, and it says Gundam universe, and you're looking for a model, don't buy it because it's not a model; it's an action figure. Also, read very carefully when you're shopping online to make sure it's a model or an action figure. Sometimes you have to read all the way into the description because they don't say in the the name title the product but uh yeah be wary of that what it all comes with as you can see you get a lot more than the model and that is, like I said the one most disappointing thing about the model is that it doesn't have a lightsaber but or beam saber pardon me um i thing is when you do get a gundam model with a beam saber you don't get uh this weird painted pink um, part it's usually a transparent pink um, so it uh, has a nice light effect to it opposed to this which is kind of icky um, but I wanted to show that uh, the lights the light part comes off and you just have this um, sometimes there's storage places for these usually there are um, sometimes on the hip but with the Gundam RX here I go right here in the back of the shoulder just like I showed with the uh, the model as well so they these both have that in common now you do get two beams one for each one the other parts you get the beam sabers and then you have two sets of hands now these are just closed fists he's got two open hands but the one thing is the one hand is actually a trigger hand for the gun and the other hand is just a regular open hand that you can use for the shield. And uh, the problem is, if you want to use both lightsabers, well, they work in both hands. But if you've got the trigger hand, he's going to be sitting there with his finger out while holding the lightsaber. Uh, it's a bit weird. Um, but that's that. There's also this little piece here. That is used to go up and underneath him that you can use for an action base um, to show him in the air or whatnot. Um, the only problem with this, put it on here and you see uh, spread his legs apart, which we'll look at that compared to the other one. And then you clip it down below. It goes on pretty easy. The problem then is you put his legs back down, his legs will not go all the way up. Uh, vertical to the ground and if you force it you'll end up popping the hip off uh, which so I mean when it's in the air maybe you want the legs splayed a little bit but you might still want a leg sitting straight down and you can't do that uh, so comparison time I believe um, as you can see they are not the same height I don't know what scale this is. It's not quite a master grade, I don't think. Uh, master grade, well, I say master grade, but a 1 100 scale um, master grades tend to be. I don't quite think it's a 1 100. That's a 1 144. So well, this is what, maybe 1 25th, 1 1 25th. Um, but yeah, they're not the same size, but we're not, that's not the biggest deal. 
with what we're comparing with. We want to look at the details and the, the uh, posability and stuff. And uh, as far as details, they look roughly the same. There's some slight differences in some of the shapes, like here you'll see on the <laughs> shoulder. Um, the sh boxy shoulders here are a little bit different on each one. <coughs> this is a little bit more triangular, has a little bit more of a slope to it. Um, but that's not an overall big deal. Uh, other than that, the painting looks fine. There's no stickers that comes with this. This comes already pre-painted. Um, I do like that it's a little bit faded color of white opposed to the, the model, which is a very bright white. That can be fixed with the model with some weathering. But it's nice that this already comes with a, not really weathering, but just, you know, what, uh, tone down the whiteness just a, a little bit, make it a little bit off-white. And that could be the materials. There is... Uh, both plastic and rubber in this. As I said, this is more of a toy, this action figure. Um, it's, it's funny, it's in the instructions, and yes, this comes with a, some instructions. It says up here, Joking hazard, small, for children three years. Not for children or three years, but then it says ages 15 and up. And I think 15 up is actually, 15 is a little bit old for this i think easily you know 10 9 10 and up would be fine um the the hardest part of this is actually the v-fins that could potentially break um you can hear them twang if you if you bump them just right but let's get down to the posability now we've already looked at him so i'm not going to pose him but let's look at this and like i said those come out um the backpack does not come off uh, the shield does plug into here, um, but as far as the arms go, let's start with that. Um, they rotate very stiffly, which isn't too bad, but rotate, but they only lift up, like, so far, like that. Um, post the other one who could lift all the way straight up. I mean, if you want him to reach up, he can just rotate the arm and lift up that way. So it's not a complete loss, but it does give the other one a little bit more posability. Now the joints, those shoulder joints are pretty tight. You can hear they're squeaking. Um, he does have a... Uh, ab crunch probably a little bit better than model and he can rotate which is another thing that the model can although there's not a lot of movement but there is some not sure why there's even that little bit because it's really not a lot um now the arms actually have two joints in there but they really it doesn't really help it out any because it, it bends just as much as this as, as the original Gundam does or the model excuse me the model kit does um, there's also no well there is bicep so we'll, you can see the joint because it's up in into the shoulder just a little bit so there's bicep sh shrivel uh, the wrists are on a ball joint so there's plenty of movement there um, we'll look at that gun just a little bit more now, <clears throat> the way the shield is designed, it, it's designed to, oops, pop in, <laughs> popped out. We'll just take it right off anyways. Shield is designed to plug into this, this piece here and uh, no other way than the, that. So you need to have <clears throat> this bracket on with the, the handle here, no matter what. And that includes to strap it on to the back, which I can't figure out. Oh, you probably have to have go this way and then strap it on. There's a hole back here, so I don't fit. There we go. So yeah, the shield does go on there like that. Um, but you can't put the shield on 
without this handle like you could with that and because the it's it's a slit that goes in well this is a round hole um but that was just a round hole and you were you could easily just put it on without the handle and you could rotate it as you wanted to and uh the, the hands are made out of a really soft rubber well fairly soft rubber so you can squeeze the handles into the that uh, arm there. As far as the legs, we get a lot more splits. This guy, not complete split, but a lot more than the original Gundam model. The only problem is this guy's joints are really loose, especially these hip joints. Probably could be tightened up with uh, some glue or something. Now, as far as the knee, that is as good as they get for bending. Well, this guy, he his knee, the model, well, you saw, bended, uh, bent all the way back and he kick himself in the butt practically. Um, there's also, there's a little bit of side to side for the leg, or the, the knee. <laughs> no, what is it? The ankle. <laughs> there's some side to side and back to forth for the ankle. There's a little bit movement with this ankle guard. Um, yeah, the legs are really loose. In this, in fact, I had have problems getting it to stand right just because of those those uh, hips being so loose. <laughs> but that's the difference. Now I don't know what your guys' opinion are. Um, I mean, this is a construction channel. Obviously, this figure requires no construction whatsoever. While this was really fun to construct. So this was definitely a lot more fun than building this guy. But as far as appearance, they're about the same. Um, but posability... Uh, yeah, I think the model actually has a little bit more on this guy, um, surprisingly enough, considering it's an action figure. Um, now the model is missing some accessories, like the lightsabers, although... Uh, there is a different version of the model that has the lightsabers and you can potentially find extra beam sabers keep calling them lightsaber beam saber blades to attach to these um, hilts now the lack of it's nice that there's extra hands that we don't get in here but <laughs> It, the, the, they aren't exactly convenient either, especially with the weird the, the gun hand. There should be uh, a uh, mirror version of this hand for that side. Yeah, it would be another hand option, but uh, it would work a little better. And the shield is also not the best way it's designed. That has The model gives much more flexibility. Uh, let's turn them around both backwards so we can look at the back. So I'll put there too much there. I mean, this guy's got much more flexibility in the legs and in the shoulders. And although he doesn't quite have as many joints in the arm, it gets as much, uh, just as much flexibility as the, one, the, the, the toy with the double joints. Now, this guy was cheap, so I didn't mind picking him up. They're, what, I think they're around $20, maybe more or less, $15, $20, maybe even $25, depending on where you buy them, how rare they are. Um, but for that same price, th this model, well, there isn't a lot of these real grades. Well, there's a lot more of these. There's only, I think, three different versions of the real grade. They come in different colors, but the, uh, the new Gundam and... The strike, I think, and uh, so there's only three different models you can get at this entry grade level, and a lot more with this guy. But you have a much more good time putting this together than you are with this. This guy's gonna look nice on your shelf, but this guy's gonna give you some good fun memories of putting it together. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Um, but let's head back. Let's head back to the desk and uh, give this guy here a final eval. We're not going to really discuss this guy anymore. Um, I mean, he's not bad looking. 
I, I, I'm a little confused about, you know, why they make a toy that's for 50, ages 15 and <laughs> up when they have model kits that, oh, I think the age on the model kit is actually eight, <laughs> eight and up, which is probably more appropriate for this guy as well. I don't know who decides these ages, um, but uh, yeah, let's head back to the desk. Let's give this final evaluation and my thoughts. Now, in regards to my final evaluation, before I even get to my thoughts, I'm not an expert at model building. Not by no means. I've done a lot more putting assembling of Lego sets since I was really young, and there's a lot more experience with them. So take my opinions with a grain of thought, a uh, grain of salt. <laughs> Take my opinions with a grain of salt. Um, and I'm not going to give this a super in-depth breakdown um, of a review. I'm going to just give it like an overall number. I'm not going to quite do it like I do it with the, the Lego sets. I will have a couple things written down in my paper that will help give me that number. But I'm just going to give the overall number um, and talk about it. So, I was really surprised with this. I haven't put really any, I, what, a couple years ago I put together a perfect grade model. Yeah, quite a jump up from an entry grade, but we're restarting over. Oh, I, I'm still working on that perfect grade, to be honest, because there's some things I had to fix and other things. More has to do with lighting than the actual model building. But, yes, I was really shocked because prior to that, most of the Gundams I'd put together were um, high grade. This is this is this entry grade level is a new one that's only come out in the past couple of years. I'm not quite sure how long it's been out. Um, this was the very first one. Makes sense since it's the very first Gundam. There has been some others. I'm gonna probably pick them up and review them because uh, I really enjoyed putting this together and. We'll stick with that. We're not going to completely stick with entry grade. We're going to move into, well, there's going to be some SD Gundams, which will actually be probably my next review. Um, but we'll be some of those, and then we'll move into a high grade. And uh, But yeah, these are really surprising, because for an entry grade, you think it'd be poor quality. Um, simple snap together. And it is simple snap together. I don't get me wrong. This, but it's really well engineered. Um, the the parts. I mean, there's no stickers in here. This is all color separation. I don't know if all entry level entry level um, Gundams are like that, but this is usually with any Gundam SD. Any of them usually have to put stickers on for the eyes at least, so they, they look decent. This doesn't. This is all part separation in the face and, and even you know things like the little cross on the shield that's not a sticker that 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 is parts all parts um and not only is that really nice that you don't have to use stickers and uh but this is so well crafted designed that they make it so that most of the seam lines are not visible um, there's still some like I, I, I you can still see them here in the shins, but even the ones that they have are not they, They're they're very tight fitting pieces that you don't see them too bad um, So even if you don't aren't an expert and don't know how to clean up your model super well This thing is still gonna look good right out of the box What you see here is right out of the box um, Yeah Posability is really good in it. Um, there's the only problem I had with the posability was just simply there's no torso twisting. He can do a little uh, um, like bowing, crunching, ab crunch, but he can't twist. He's stuck permanently in a straight position. Um, that is the only really missing posability I would say I mean he could use maybe double elbows but they're really not necessary that it's got enough room in it and I'm really surprised that some of the other like the amount of uh, motion he has in his shoulders 
to, you know, he can reach for the sky if he wants to. Um, that That's really, really something. Um, plenty of po motion in his head with the double double joints or whatever. And, and as an entry grade, I've... This is probably better than some of the old um, high grades I put together, which were mostly Gundam Wing ones. But yeah, they, they I feel like they're a, they're a lot better, and uh, I probably have to dust some of them off and get them out here, and we'll we'll look at them. Those won't be full reviews or anything, but we also might compare them to this entry grade, which you know should in theory kind of be lower quality but it's not that's just how well things have, um they've improved over the years um but yeah this is really a great model kit um the, the some other problems is the joints are really tight but this is a model kit it's not meant to be played with it's supposed to be you compose it and then you leave it alone um and some of those tight joints will help with holding of weapons and things like that so it's not terrible at all it's probably a good thing um but yeah you, you don't want to be playing with these that much these are you put it pose it and, you know put it on your shelf for display um maybe you change it up a little bit later or something but that's that um yeah my only other complaint with it is that there are no beam sabers. We have beam saber hilts, but no beam beams for the beam sabers. And I know part of the Gundam's design is supposed to have these beam saber handles sticking out of the bag as part of his backpack and whatnot. But the, they should have at least put some uh, blades, uh, some beam saber blades yes the, the the special effects part so you could do just a little bit more with it um but it's great with the weapons it has the gun's okay it looks like the standard one that it usually carries um and the shield looks really nice with the uh, part separation and everything else like I said the only thing this could probably use is a little bit of panel lining and some of the the crevices and stuff which will make it pop even more and some weathering if you wanted to you know make it look a little bit more war torn it's been through some stuff um, there's some seams that could probably be cleaned up more although he said they are really tight and yeah they, they look really good um, but uh, yeah so when I went to give this a grade, I gave it a 9.5. And like I said, most of those points that I talked about already is why it didn't get a full 10. This is a really great little model kit. Um, good posability, great color separation. I, I really like it and was very impressed by it. Um, granted, like I said, I have not put a lot together since... I was since Gundam Wing came out, really, maybe after Gundam Wing, but they were Gundam Wing models that are most of the ones that I had put together. Um, so a lot's changed since then, and I am quite impressed, and I'm looking forward to putting more together. Um, I have put together some like SD Gundams, and mostly because they're on the cheap side, just like this is, and easier to get my hands on and, and stuff like that. <laughs> And those aren't impressive. I, I still like them, but they, they aren't as impressive as, say, this is, uh, by any means. Um, where they're, sh they're, they're designed with big heads and short arms and legs. Well, with the short arms and legs, they have lack of posability. That's just the, 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 the design, the purpose of them. They're very much like a... A pop figure um, where they have a big head and small body um, so you can imagine them not having that much posability and it's true they have some and probably a little bit more than you would you would think but uh, we'll talk more about that in the next another episode probably the next one even um, of 
my model Monday. Um, so anyways, that's pretty much it for this guy. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please like if you did. And uh, if you didn't, did or didn't, please leave a comment what you thought about it. What do you think about uh, Gundam models overall? Um, the This is the original granddaddy one, so uh, I need to go and actually watch the old shows and get myself more familiar with them. I'm more familiar with Wing and some of the other newer series. I think other than Wing, the first, the, the newest one, I, or not the newest one I've seen, the oldest one after Wing that I have watched, I believe was Age. And I've seen Iron-Blooded Orphans and now currently Witch for Mercury. Witch of Mercury. Um, though I've, I may have seen bits and pieces of some of the other stuff. I'm sure I have. Um, anyways, but yeah. Give this a like if you enjoyed it. If you're not familiar with my channel, please subscribe. There's going to be more of this model fun stuff to come. Won't always be Gundam. I've got other things to look at too. And uh, yeah. That's going to be fun. So, they, they aren't going to be quite as, like, uh, I'm going to give my overall thoughts more than I am going to give them a grade. I am going to maybe give them a grade overall, um, like I did with this. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think down below. Um, and uh, subscribe if you're not familiar, or if you enjoy what you see here. And hit the notification bells. Um... And also, either follow me on Facebook and Twitter because you'll get notifications faster. Um, also, make sure you're making your hit, making sure you hit the right notification buttons. There's actually multiples now. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people aren't getting notifications because they have the wrong notifications turned on. Like, there's an, there's a personal one, and that only just lets you know when somebody comments on one of your comments or something like that. You want it, you want the one for the whole channel to to get when something new comes out. Uh, so make sure you're, you're check that. You can check that on the notifications, or like I said, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You'll get notifications as, as soon as the video comes out. And uh, yeah, that's it for me here, at the Creation Evaluation Station, reminding you that creativity is key.